Hello and welcome to this special broadcast here on CNN News 18. After two years of the pandemic, stalled investments and economic malaise, and of course uh, all the political implications of it, finally the Karnataka story seems to be back on track after the successful hosting of the Global Investors Meet where more than 5 lakh crores of investments have been promised. And joining me is the man in the hot seat, the man who many are saying is responsible for this turnaround story, the Chief Minister of Karnataka, Shri Baswaraj Brahmai. Thank you very much Thanks. for speaking with us here on CNN News 18. So the global investors meet. Uh, it's been a huge success. Uh, more than 5 lakh crores of investment have been pledged. Are you happy with the way things have panned out? Yeah, certainly it is uh, turning out to be more than 7 lakh crores. Mm -hmm. mm. Especially after COVID. Yeah. And there was a gloom of uh, in economics uh, in other parts of the world. Of course, the resilient Indian economy is growing at the 6.7 to 7 percent uh, growth. But nevertheless, uh, the entire uh, world, especially the great economic giants like U.S., Canada, European Union. Mm. They are not only facing uh, inflation, they are facing recessions also. Yeah. And uh, the second issue which has really been very well closely watched is the, uh, the fall, falling of China mm. in economic front. Correct. They have got their own internal problems. Nevertheless, most of the countries are thinking of China plus one. That means they want alternate to China. Hmm. And the countries which have taken up uh, are Cambodia, Korea. These are all very small countries. Sure. India has got that capability of technology, mass production. It has got capability of capital investments. Therefore, large number of foreign capitalists flowing into this country. Mm. And the faith in our leader Narendra Modi ji to lead the country from the front and really bring it out of economic crisis all over the world. It can be a second economic stop mm. after the western world. So I feel that if the opportunity is used from emerging economic India, it will be emerged economic India. Mm -hmm. And in the entire country, Karnataka plays a very important role. It sure. has been playing for a long time. Sure. So, the success story of Karnataka will be certainly a great boost for the success story of India. So, tell me something, sir. One of the concerns has been that 5 lakh crore, 6 lakh crore, whatever has been pledged, um, we've seen this in the past in other states as well, in Gujarat, in Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Bengal, where there's a lot of investments that are pledged, but ultimately what translates on ground is a, a small figment yeah, of that. You're right. How are you going to mitigate that? The previous government, uh, which did the uh, government <coughs> global investor meet in Karnataka, they could hardly realize 28%. Mm -hmm. So, this time we have changed our plans. We have been talking to the industries about five months back. MOs were signed. After MO was signed, we didn't keep quiet. We followed it up. They have put applications for the projects. And we are already cleared. 2.8 lakh crores of worth of projects hmm. have been cleared before the global investors meet. Okay. <coughs> so, we have been very proactive hmm. to see that lot of is converted, MOEs are converted into projects. Second thing, I have told my officers, whatever MOEs are there other than 2.8 crores, whatever it comes, 5 lakhs, 6 or 7 lakhs, this should be decided in the next three months. Okay. Either they come or they don't come. Correct. Because we are very, very a serious government mm. to make Karnataka as a growth engine and we want the investor also to be serious. Mm. And secondly, I'm inviting the investors on our strength, not on our incentives and uh, other doles. I want them to come mm. for the technology, 
for the skilled manpower. I want them to come for a very good cosmopolitan culture. Correct. And uh, I want them to come where mass scale productions are done. <coughs> and India is such a big market. So on based on our strength, I want them to come invest so that they will be successful. There was a feeling even up until a few months ago that the Bangalore story is over. People don't want to come and invest in Bangalore. Other cities are coming up. Hyderabad was taking away business. Chennai was taking away business. Do you feel that that concern has now been addressed? And what have you done to address that concern? A big company or even a small company going out of Bangalore. People once come to Bangalore, they make it a home. <laughs> once in Bangalore, you can once never go Bangalore, out of Bangalore. you're always in Bangalore. And habit of living in Bangalore is so addictive mm. that they can't go outside. And uh, I, do, I don't want to uh, okay. talk uh, negative or ill about others, other cities like other of my counterparts. As I said, I want to build my Karnataka on its strength so that it lasts long. Hmm. I don't want to say that if there, something is wrong, there you come here. Hmm. Oh, now but humko nahi hai. <laughs> Secondly, my competition is with the world. <coughs> it's a global competition. Hmm. My ITBT is competing with Silicon Valley. My aerospace is competing with US and France. Mm. All, all the, all the, out of 500 Fortune companies, 400 are here. And 400 niche R&D um, centers, uh, in, in innovation centers are in Bangalore, right from human genomics to the air space. No other city in the world can come anywhere near Bangalore in this regard, R&D. Okay. Forget India. 400 niche. Every day more than five to 10,000 engineers all over the world come to Bangalore for R&D purpose. Come mm -hmm. and go out. So this is the level of ecosystem we have been created. But tell me something, investors are also concerned, and this has been a perennial thing, that even before your government came to power, about infrastructure, traffic woes. We saw that recently with the rains also, how one part of Bangalore had completely submerged. What is your government doing to address that concern? I think um, I was seeing a TV other day where uh, the rains have played havoc in Canada, in US, hmm. even in Japan. So whenever there is a huge rainfall in a short time, hmm. it is going to create. And it's all temporary. Okay. It's all... Uh, be, see, which, which city uh, doesn't have floods, you tell me. Hyderabad didn't have, Delhi didn't have, Chennai didn't have. Bombay, hmm. it has become a routine. Yeah. Whenever monsoon comes, it has become a routine. Hmm. This is because how, this is how the cities are built in this country. Villages have been converted into cities and cities have been converted to mega cities. So time has come for the entire country to think of building new cities hmm. rather than expanding the old cities. And the, the same problem we are also facing. The traffic, we are 5,000 new vehicles hit every day. True. We are 125, 1,25,000 crores, 1.25 crores of population and we have got a traffic population of 1.10. Shortly we are going to overtake the population. Okay. So there are more vehicles than people in Bangalore. And, uh, and the highest number of people come to Bangalore in a day. The floating population is the highest in the country. Hmm. So these are the challenges. So we have to improve our infrastructure, certainly I agree. Hmm. That's why we want to decongest Bangalore. And I am talking of building new townships in and around Bangalore with a proper mobility. And I am at it and already we have taken certain steps. That is one way of uh, building or expanding the Bangalore. Second is improving the systems, especially traffic. Um, I am now relying on my technology. For example, a seamless, uh, uh, our uh, seamless signals where signals make vehicles stop for uh, two minutes, three minutes. Yeah. There has to be a seamless signals, uh, at least on the major roads. And then a uh, lot of uh, uh, changes in the traffic plan. Mm. So it's all in the annual. In days to come, I'm sure that traffic will be trying to ease it out.
Okay, let's come to some political questions. When you took office uh, over a year ago, uh, there was this whole moniker about corruption, Sarkar, 40% Sarkar, so on and so forth. There was this famous case of a contractor who had even written to the Prime Minister. The Congress opposition has been making a big deal about it. My question to you is, what have you done in the last one year to erase that perception or to mitigate that perception? First of all, that perception is political. Mm -hmm. Nothing to I called them. Said, please give me one small or big case where you have paid 40 or less than 40. You tell me. Okay. They never came out of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, some of the contractors were telling TV, television that we have paid so much and all. And uh, when we asked them, really asked them, they never done the work for the last eight years. Mm -hmm. No, it is totally political. That's, that's a part. To weed out the corruption. It all starts from the estimates of the work. Mm. Estimates are bloated. So I have made a committee, high-level committee, where high court judges there, and retired high court judges there, and retired uh, technician, uh, technical officers are there. They are going to scrutinize all the major estimates of the major projects, okay. right? From the which comes from the department, and they are going to scrutinize critically and see that if nothing is bloated, nothing has been added on, add-on is not there, it should be realistic. Mm. That's number one. Number two, I have said that uh, not more than 5% premium should be paid to all cut. Earlier, in some cases during uh, Congress government, Sidramaya government, I got instant, they paid 20%, 30%, 40%, 50% premium. Mm -hmm. So I stopped all that nonsense. Okay. And then uh, there was a demand from contractors that at Taluka level, the, the more participation should be there. So no big patches, uh, patches has to be. I have taken steps for that. We have passed orders, it's already implemented. Thirdly, in terms of payments, there was questions asked. So I said, everything should be on seniority. And uh, I am now digitalizing the entire payment. No contractor should come to the office. Mm. It should go to his account, whatever it is due is. Sure. Before uh, uh, payment, all the checks should, uh, all the checking should be done. So these are major changes I am going to bring out in the, in the entire uh, payments. System. Payments, not only payments, awarding everything. Mm. And uh, Congress had removed uh, all the technical scrutiny committee mm. and tender scrutiny committee in irrigation and other department. I brought it back. So there are three levels of checks. So this is how we are trying to see that the system takes care of all these corruption elements. Mm -hmm. And if system improves, then I, more than uh, men, men, you know, what different kind of men. But system, if system improves, mm -hmm. I think lot of, it brings a lot of change. The, and corruptions are at two levels. Mm -hmm. One at the higher level and at the lower level. Lower level corruption, I am trying to address them through, once again, technology. Okay. We have got uh, 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 units in every gram panchayat, mm -hmm. grama one. So where the certificate, different kind of certificates are issued uh, online. When, mm -hmm. Whenever they come, they have to just feed their online and they get it. So within few minutes, they get all the certificates. Okay. Instead of standing for a long queue and that thing. So, at, at different levels, we are trying to improve the whole thing. So, so when the same Congress, the same opposition that you refer to, uh, they are taking out posters and campaigns about uh, corruption in, in your government, what do you say to them? You say that it's a political thing, that, it's, uh, that it has no bearing in reality? Who is speaking? Devil is quoting. <laughs> the scripture. Yeah. They are, Congress party is an architect of corruption in this country. Mm. Both starts with C, Congress and corruption. They go together. Who is speaking? Secondly, they think that by doing this, by putting uh, dirt on uh, me, mm. they think get away. But there is a whole lot of skeletons in their cupboard. Mm. The moment it is put to the people, they will not, they have to hide their faces. So with this track record, what morality they have got and all this PSCM is not going to work. Okay. It, it has not found any traction anywhere. Hmm. Yeah. Today a story came out again relating to the Congress Party since we are talking about the opposition in your state. 
that uh, there is reportedly uh, anybody who wants a ticket to the Congress party needs to pay 2 lakh rupees in demand draft. I want to get your reaction on that. See, Congress party bo boasts itself party of the poor. Hmm. Now, which poor man can pay 2 lakhs to get a ticket? That means in Congress, no poor man is going to get a ticket. Okay. No credible man can get a ticket. Only a person with money bags can get a ticket. So who will be the person to get money bags? A man who is corrupt or corrupt in business or corrupt in uh, politics can only pay that kind of amount of this thing. Mm. So it is once again reflects on Congress the reliability on corruption and corrupt money to their, to, to their politics. So it's really sad that uh, more than 100 years old party which has fought yeah. Uh, they claim that independence. Yeah. A lot of other people have also fought it, not, not just uh, Subhash Chandra Bose, Bhagat Singh. Bhagat Singh was not a congressman. True. Chandrasekhar was not a congressman. Lokman Tilak was not a congressman. Allah Lajpatra was not a congressman. I can go on. Therefore, this party has come to this stage where blatantly, openly are supporting the practice of corruption in this country. One other issue which uh, has been flagged off, uh, some um, corporate leaders have also raised concerns about this, is about the promotion of the local language. Your government is planning to bring a bill in the next session of the Assembly uh, where you are going to encourage Canada uh, in all spheres of uh, public life, as it were. How does this fit in with what, let's say, other chief ministers in South are saying, whether it is a Pinarayi Vijayan in Kerala, Stalin in Tamil Nadu, saying that this is Hindi imposition. How do you see it? No, no. You, you, the question is very contradictory. Mm. In one breath, uh, they say that uh, I am imposing Canada. Now, when I am imposing Canada, how can uh, Hindi come in a way? Okay. No, but yeah, do you buy this argument that Hindi is being imposed? No, no. When I am allowed to have Canada mm. and uh, jobs for Kannadigas, when I'm allowed, where's the question of Hindi? Every Matru Bhasha is also Rashtra Bhasha for me. What, what do you say to corporate leaders who say, you know, half Bangalore, the whole IT story was probably built by outsiders who came to this state. Why are you forcing them to learn the local language? What, what do you say to them? I, I don't want to name anybody, but you know who, who no, are the no, people no, who have raised it. See, lot of you go check up the IT engineers. Most of them are from Kannada only. Okay. They come from different parts of Karnataka. Mm. They are the engineers and they are the technicians. The issue is they should not be worried because in Karnataka we have got skill manpower and skill is very important for anything. Sure. And we are going to have a very big skill development programs for our youngsters right from village to the cities. So. We are going, Kannadigas will be empowered with skill, technology. Mm. And that's good enough for uh, any people, need not be worried about it. Do, do you think job uh, concerns are a reality? I mean, again, Congress and other opposition parties have been saying that jobless growth. We are growing at 7%, 8%, but it's jobless growth. Do you think that is a concern? See, uh, once again, see, Congress is uh, really bankrupt with ideas. Mm -hmm. How can there be economic growth uh, without jobs? Yes. And they consider the what are the jobs created in a private sector are not jobs. Mm -hmm. They only think of government jobs as jobs. After liberalization, globalization by their own Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, True. the whole concept of economic growth and employment generation has shifted to the private sector. Mm -hmm. They don't want to look at that side. Mm -hmm. In fact, Karnataka is giving 10% of the job to the entire country. Highest. So once once the economy grows, automatically it has to grow with the help of the people. Mm. And I believe <coughs> that the people at the bottom of the pyramid are the real moves and shakers of economy. Mm -hmm. They are the people who are going to convert on the capital into the uh, the economic activity. Mm. Therefore, I have given stress a lot to my 
people like farmers laborers skill laborers agriculture laborers weavers fishermen so different uh, professions what they occupy i'm trying to help them in all all respects so for me uh, and secondly we have got a very beautiful programs for <coughs> both women and youth okay. i'm going to give employment for 5 lakh women and 5 lakh youths in one year mm. uh, uh, self employment sure. and i mean employment self employment so one other issue has been about uh, the the perception it is a perception uh, that after your government came to office a lot of religious issues are getting or uh, coming to the forefront uh, as i give you a moment to get a sip of water uh, whether it is hijab or halal or whatever it is uh, how do you see this and what would you say uh, about this perception is this perception born out in reality or is this political what 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 is the what is your understanding one second it's political the girls who who demanded to wear hijabs mm. they were not wearing hijabs the other day and the last year they have been coming to school and college for 10 to 12 years without hijab and all of a sudden they felt it hijab is there they have been provoked there is a lot of people behind it including pfi and congress behind it but i didn't look at the religious perspective which it has been blown out both in public and press see we have got i go by the solutions by the law we have got a education uh, karnataka education act where the dress code is defined hmm. that's how it has been withheld by uh, upheld by uh, the high uh, high court and now it is in the supreme court ultimately a larger bench is going to look into it sure and as you know there is so much of hue and cry in the entire world about hijab the liberalization of women there so when the world is going other way especially in the islamic country these people want to take a retrograde step i am not pro or against it mm. but it's a perception which have been built politically and i solved it legally Mm, mm. they try to fight me politically i solved it legally similarly azan azan we have followed supreme court order on pollution and now everybody is online after 10 to 6 there are no uh, loud speakers for for any community mm. and it's a supreme court direction mm. so everything is i they try to politicize i solve them legally that's the difference in our administration I, i don't look look everything in a uh, in, in, uh, through the glasses of religion mm. it it's ultimately human beings are all one yeah and we have to work together and live together so there has to be some order in the society a orderless society is a chaos is anarchy correct so i in a democracy there is no place for anarchy what is your impression of uh, rahul gandhi's bharat jodo yatra at least the images seem to show that uh, there are a lot of crowds coming to his yatra it is a rotten crowd there was no connect between rahul gandhi and people who worked with him there is no connect between rahul gandhi and the people because he failed to address why is walking why is walking hmm. bharat jodo bharat kahan tod gaya hai तोड़ने के लिए okay. जो टूटा था वो भी अभी एक हो रहा है सो ही समाओ आई डोंट नो ही स्क्रिप्ट राइटर्स आर वंस अगेन रॉन्ग आई हैज फेल टू कनेक्ट विद द पीपल बोथ इन केरला एंड कर्नाटक एंड इन आंध्र व्हेन यू केम टू ऑफिस ओवर अ ईयर अगो मिस्टर बोमई देयर वर पीपल आउटसाइडर्स क्रिटिक्स ओपोजिशन सम पीपल इवन इन योर ओन पार्टी हु सेड यू विल नॉट लास्ट 6 मंथ्स देन दे सेड you will not uh, be the face going into the next election is that debate settled in your party will you be the chief ministerial face for bjp going into 2023 you are, you are talking to me as a chief minister of yes. karnataka after one and a half years yes. so what is your take <laughs> my take does not matter i am asking your take you are the chief minister i just i said one and a half years if i am there i will be there and i'm going to lead through the success of bjp bjp is going to come back to power in 2023 so the leadership debate is settled 
you go on debating and I am becoming more stable and stable. <laughs> All right. Basraj Bhumai, thank you very much for speaking with us here on CNN News 18. And uh, congratulations on the successful uh, holding of the Global Investors Meet. Thank you, thank thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.